you pass through waking state, dream state and deep sleep state. Now the wonderful thing about these three states is you are able to say something about all three states. Waking state is when the mind is active, senses are active, right? Hmm? Just now we are in that state. When you go into dream, when you fall asleep and you, you dream something, your senses are closed in that state but the mind is active. From your subconscious mind, you are spinning a dream and getting totally involved with it, right? In your dream, you do not think it is a dream, it is something real. When you wake up, you say it's, it was a dream, right? Hmm? Then in the deep sleep state, so you are able to recollect your dreams also. In the deep sleep state, what happens? Senses are closed, mind is also closed, but you say you experienced happiness, restfulness and you did not experience objects. So somebody was there to say you did not, there was lack of experience of objects. So it is an experience of absence, it is not an absence of experience. You are experiencing the absence of objects, right? You are experiencing, that is why you are able to tell that in that state I did not experience objects and the state of restfulness it gives you. So you were there subliminal consciousness in some way intuited the absence of objects and the presence of restfulness, the experience of restfulness which means you were very much present. There is one invariable passing through three variable states of waking dream and deep sleep. That invariable is the self awareness persisted through all these three states. That is why they are states of your mind. You the self always exist, the three states as it were pass over you. See your own daily experience is pointing out to the presence of the self within you. If you catch this logic, this basic logic, it comes in the Mandukya Upanishad, that much alone is enough. Mandukya eva alam they say. This one thing alone is enough, it will strike you and tell you that this is the fact about human life. How did I miss this out? Because Vedantic knowledge was not there. Nobody pointed it, this out to us. All that Vedanta does for you is, it will tell you, learn to think this way. This is the fact of your experience. Kabhi kisi ne apne upar hi itna gabhi research kiya hai? This is research on yourself. You are researching everything under the sun, even above the sun. But you have not researched yourself, not gone deep into yourself. So this is a science which gives you this, introduces you to your real self through these mechanisms. One more simple thing I will just point out, see if it makes sense to you. Hmm. See now suppose I say concentrate or pay attention, you will at once become alert. It requires effort on your part. Hmm. If I say, well think of this particular thing, again you will apply effort. See to pay attention you require effort, to focus you require effort, to think you require effort, to feel you require effort, just to be self-aware, do you require effort? Because you are aware, you are thinking, you are feeling, you are willing. Awareness is primary, is the primary thing about you. In that awareness, there is mind function. So all these faculties of thinking, feeling and willing. It is so obvious in your own experience. That is why awareness requires no effort. The only thing required is be still and know who you are, which means actually distance yourself from the mind which is constantly busy. Otherwise it will drag you into its ways. So self-awareness is always there. In that awareness you are perceiving. Before you go into your perceptions, acknowledge this fact. This is the simple thing which Vedanta is telling you. So there are a number of such clues or pointers which tell you Truth is always as it is. You do not have to add anything to it. You do not have to extract it from somewhere. Realization itself means knowing something which already is. So you just realized it, that it is there, not creating it. See, please see, if you created it, 
if you made it up, it would be unreal. If it is already there, I came to know of it now, then it is realization. It was always there. I, my mind was not sensitive to it. It had closed itself to this truth. Now it has opened up, so I realize this truth. Vedanta is like that. You just open up, wake up to reality, that's all. Last time I had told you the story of waking up from the dream, the tiger story, you remember? You just wake up to the facts, basic facts of life. You know, this process of self-enquiry is so powerful. There are people who have woken up to the reality of self just through self-enquiry. Just through the, this, these clues, they have woken up to the reality. You have heard of Raman Maharshi? Hmm? Some of you have heard. See, he was a great sage of Thiruvannamalai, Tamil Nadu, who just realized the self through inquiry. At a very young age, at the age of 16, as a young boy, you know how he realized? It is so remarkable. Huh? Just observe this carefully. Hmm? He was a young lad sitting and studying in his home in Madurai. Suddenly, in his mind, the, the fear of death came very intensely into his mind, a violent kind of fear. He thought, what is death? And then he tried to enact, simulate death. He laid down and tried to feel what it means to die. And you know, actually that act and the ripeness of his soul actually generated a kind of mystical experience for him then and there which means he felt his body to be completely uh, sort of removed of vitality. But yet his sen force of his personality, his eye sense is throbbing like anything. Vitality, prana shakti is being withdrawn from the body, but his eye sense is unchanged. The full force of his personality, even the ahams furan what is called, the eye sense is throbbing within him. In his own words, he says, I understood all this directly, even without the thought process. This became a matter of simple direct perception for me, even without too much thought, he says, that I exist always, even when the body is not there. So his death experience actually led him to self-realization. Later on, he would say, you know, each of his words will hit you if this kind of an awakening comes. He says, your existence is evident with or without the body. Your existence is evident with or without thought. You exist so you are thinking. You exist so body consciousness can come. But your existence is self-evident. You are functioning through body and mind, but never identified with it unless you will it. And he used to say this self-knowledge, because he had self-knowledge immediately right there, he used to say this will always persist no matter what you are doing. It's like that Shruti, you know the monotone in Indian classical music, there is a Shruti which you hold on to before you sing the different notes. He used to say this self is the monotone which will exist, which is always there no matter what other notes you are singing. This self is that monotone. It is the common denominator of all your experiences. It is the common denominator ever existing reality before anything else comes up, before your thought begins, before your will begins, before your perceptions and sensations begin. Because you are aware, the rest of it is going on. So you see, a simple simulation of death and self-inquiry led him into of course, he is no ordinary person <laughs> to get the experience then and there and to remain in that experience all through his life. So, that was Raman Maharshi. So, there are people, there are great examples right in front of us 